in recent months, it's got more and more difficult to find uh, mid-range graphics cards at a decent price, especially on the AMD side, but it's even affected some of the Nvidia cards. This is a GTX 1070, for example, and right now they are going for about $500 if you're gonna find a brand new one, when the original MSRP for these cards was under $400. Now, it's not news per se that uh, these graphics cards are more expensive. We've known for a while now that it's hard to find certain graphics cards, and if you do find them, you're gonna be paying an extreme premium compared to what they were originally supposed to cost. But that got me thinking, just how much are we paying for graphics cards across the board? So today I wanna look at the original MSRP of several different graphics cards, both from Nvidia and on the AMD side, and then I want to look at how readily available these cards are, and when you find them, just what you're gonna pay for them. Now, as I said, we're gonna be covering both NVIDIA and AMD. On the NVIDIA side, we're starting with the GTX 1050 and working on every card all the way up to the 1080 Ti. On the AMD side, we're gonna be covering both the 400 and 500 series, starting with the 460 and 560 and ending with the 480s and the 580s. For my purposes, I use the two websites that I feel like most people will be going to to find their computer components unless you happen to have a store like Micro Center or a Fry's Electronics nearby, and that would be Newegg.com as well as Amazon.com. Basically what I did was I took the original MSRP and then I looked for the cheapest variant of that particular card, maybe it's a 470 for example, and then I put that price as the price that you would have to pay. And then in the charts you will also see a third bar, so there's the original price, the current current price and then you're gonna see a bar that denotes the change in price. Now ideally with a graphics card over time you'd see the price go down so that bar should be going the opposite direction of the uh, other two bars that are in its series. However, what you'll see here is a lot of these prices have actually gone the wrong way. They've actually gone up and in AMD's case, they've gone up a lot. Now, before we hop into the couple graphs that I have here, I, I split them up Nvidia and AMD separately to make the graphs a little bit more manageable. I will also point out that a couple of the cards I thought were actually really good deals. And I put some of those links to Amazon links down uh, below for you to check out. For example, the 1080s right now are a really good value compared to like a 1070. But but I also want to ask for your help. If you find these deals elsewhere or on Amazon or on Newegg and you find the prices cheaper than the ones that I found, please go ahead and put those links in the uh, comments down below. I know they'll be marked as spam and all that, but I'll just go ahead and approve uh, those comments when I get around to it so that people coming here might have a better chance of finding a good deal on a graphics card. So we'll just... Uh, Go ahead and set this guy aside and hop into those graphs. Now, as we look at the prices of NVIDIA's graphics card lineup, the black bar is the launch price, the MSRP of the card. The sort of burnt orange bar is what its current price can be found on either Newegg or Amazon, uh, whichever price I found was cheaper from those two places, and the green bar denotes the change. Now, since these aren't brand new cards, you should see that green bar going down a little bit, denoting that the graphics card prices have come down. However, what we see here is the GTX 1050 has come down just slightly down to about $100, and I would attribute that as uh, direct competition with it and the RX 460 and 560 cards. Now the GTX 1050 Ti has come up a little bit in price, and I'll get back to that one here in a second. The GTX 1060 has seen a little bit of a price hike, going up to about uh, $250. Now that card will soon fall out of favor as it won't be able to Ethereum mine for all that much longer uh, due to the DAG file size getting too large for a 3 gigabyte VRAM buffer to handle. The GTX 1060 has come up the most in price of Nvidia's cards, launching with an MSRP of $250 and now retailing for $400 uh, was about the cheapest I could find the 6 gigabyte variant. That's a $150 price hike. The GTX 1070 is also a very strong Ethereum miner, going from 380 on the MSRP all the way up to 480 right now, about the cheapest you could find them. The GTX 1080 has done exactly what you would expect a card of its age to do. 
starting out at $600, and I found a cheap one uh, clear down to the $475 price point, and I believe I'll have a link, I think it was an Amazon link, to that particular card. Um, I do believe it was just an Asus blower style card, it was not a Founders Edition or anything like that, but if you're interested in that card, check out the link below. And the GTX 1080 Ti has largely been responsible for the price drop in the 1080. It took over as the flagship of the 1000 series from NVIDIA and has caused the 1080, which is not a great Ethereum mining card, to plummet in price. Now, real quick, before we move on to AMD's cards, I mentioned I would come back to the 1050 Ti. The 1050 Ti, I believe, has come up in cost just a little bit as a result of there not really being a lot of mid-range graphics cards available. And that would include things like the 1060, the 1060, uh, 6 gigabyte version, the 470, 480, 570, 580 from AMD. I believe the lack of a mid-range right now has resulted in a slight price increase for the 1050 Ti. Moving on to AMD's current generation of graphics cards, as well as the 400 series, and this is where we see the biggest impact of Ethereum mining. Now, the RX 460 has mostly been unaffected by Ethereum mining, seeing price drops on both the 2GB and 4GB variants of that card. The RX 470 was not so lucky. I found a 470 4GB version, and, and there are, by the way, some 8GB versions of this card floating around. I just didn't put it on the chart, but it originally retailed for about 100 $180 and it's now trading at $511 brand new. Now you can find used 470s cheaper on uh, both Amazon and on other places like eBay, but if you want a brand new one, be prepared for about a $511 price tag. Now, I'm not sure if it has to do with availability, but I was able to find 480s a little bit cheaper than 470s, actually considerably cheaper at $380, but that's still a price change of plus $180 since the 4 gigabyte 480 launched. And then the 8 gigabyte 480 is all the way up at $515, a full $275 more expensive than it was when it launched. Moving on to the 500 series, the RX 560 has largely been unaffected by Ethereum mining. It is being sold right now for about $110 for the 2 gigabyte variant. The RX 570 jumps back up to $450 for a brand new one. That's plus 280 of the MSRP. The RX 580 4 gigabyte version is at 433 I found. Again, up $233 from its MSRP. And the RX 580 8 gigabyte version is all the way up there at $540. That's plus $310 from what the original MSRP was. So that's sort of the uh, current state of the graphics card market as of uh, early July 2017. Now hopefully when Vega launches, uh, graphics card vendors will have a little bit more stock on hand and ready to meet the demand. However, that's uh, wishful thinking I believe considering that it sounds like HBM2 uh, doesn't have great yields on the manufacturing side of things which could mean shortages of those cards on top of that being an amd card it'll likely mine fairly well so i expect miners to uh, snatch those up as well but hopefully the mining craze ends in the not so distant future and we can get these uh prices back under control and get graphics cards in the hands of uh, consumers specifically those ones that are gaming because as a community the it's really making it hard to build a decently priced uh, gaming pc with solid performance with the way the prices currently are. But again, guys, if you uh, find cheap prices somewhere, please comment those down below so other people can use those links and snatch up some of those cards for their gaming builds. If you like this content, please give me a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Those things are all super helpful for the channel. You can find me uh, on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.